Welcome back to the ThinkTech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture on a wonderful spring break March day of 2017. And instead of having gone to Cancun or other attractive places, we decided to spend spring break in the jungle and in our urban jungle of our city of Honolulu. And spring break coincides with uh, an annual event of the AIA, the American Institute of Architects, and the chapter uh, Honolulu, which is Architecture Month. And uh, there's going to be a kickoff this Friday. And we, can we get uh, yeah, uh, page number one exactly? And we can zoom into the uh, glasses, the white uh, brown glass there. We can see the participants. Uh, who are um, going to be part of that. So there's going to be a Picture Kucha um, uh, event that's going to kick off uh, the, uh, the month uh, of architecture. And uh, the topic uh, is, as we can read, our urban fabric. And uh, today um, we're going to have um, a, my, my co-presenter, because I'm invited as well, and I thought, because I'm representing the category of education, how can I do that without the ones who educate me as much as <laughs> I educate them? So um, we're going to have an, an expert in, uh, in, in jungleism here. And this is uh, Chris Chibueta. Chris, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It's very exciting. Awesome to have you. And so let's let's jump right in. What is that thing with this with this jungle and 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 bring uh, for that bring uh, picture number two. So what are we looking at here? So this is a model that we explored during um, our three forty two class. So this is and this is downtown where we're at. But the, um, the urban fabric of downtown. You can see um, all the high rises. Um, how it's represented with um, enclosed um, facades, and I guess just the the architecture of what it looks like today. Mm -hmm. And you can see later on that the steps that we did to um, just explore different scenarios mm -hmm. of, um, I guess, reinventing what downtown can be, what what's the better way of um, making our buildings here in Hawaii. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's, so number two demonstrated um, Kazi Ashraf, who has moved on, but we remember him, we'll always remember him oh, with yes. the best feelings. Kazi yes. has a book out that's called Hermit Huts, and so we use the term hermit as we titled this here as the Hermit's Hermetic Honolulu, right? We're all yes. sealed off. Always reminds me of one of the beginning scenes in the, in the, uh, the Descendants movie by Alexander Payne with George Clooney and others. Where there's this, there's this moment we watched it actually together, uh, where they're all gathering in a downtown building, just like the one we're in here, where it's all fixed glazing, and it's all AC'd, and there's all Aloha shirts mm -hmm. tucked in the pants, which is probably good because then you stay warmer because AC makes you so cold. And so, um, number number three, um, I'm gonna uh, provide here a couple of glimpses of um, bits and pieces of my professional work with my family business that could give clues of, you know, uh, the actual sort of architectural case studies that sort of demonstrate the human event and activity. So I choose this one here to say maybe the only potential we have in the current fabric as it is maybe to inhabit the rooftops, which are currently wasted spaces. They're mostly just the, the tarp or the water membrane, which gets beaten by the sun so yeah. they don't last long. So maybe we could start to invade inhabit uh, the rooftops. But then uh, more importantly, because that's rather marginal, what else could we do? And that's the next picture. And that's rather radical. And here you are, literally speaking. What, what are you doing there? So what you see here is um, just a class. Um, I guess we had 13 of us. So we wanted to explore how um, downtown would look like with facades off. So. What we did, we had a temporary wrap around the building just to like, so it's easy to just take it off. And then inside we see like the bones of the, the building, like mm -hmm. what you say, um, the beauty of the beast. Mm -hmm. um, just basically, if you zoom in, you see just like repeated slabs of each building and clear, clear floor plan, 
just air going through, just like a beauty, like a beauty sense of what um, I guess a comfortable, uh, comfortable building would be. Mm -hmm. So it's really radical, sort of stripping them naked, right? Yes. Really, like down to the bones, as you say. And yeah. Next picture is is a an office building we did back in Germany, a number five which is just demonstrating we're still going to work in, in downtown. It's still going to be a work environment, but not exclusively anymore, because right now it's pretty much a monofunctional hermetic environment, nine to five. People work here and then they drive home to the burbs and it falls basically empty. So working is still going to happen there, but in a way more open, way more daylight filled, way more naturally ventilated, easy breezy way, right? Mm -hmm. So that is then number six, right? Number six is demonstrating what you were talking about before, right? Yeah. So this is um, just like what I said with the stacked floors, having the beauty of the building showing the inside of the building because like we said, whatever is on the inside is what matters the most, not the outside. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, just a better environment of what architecture can be in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. Because right now every building here depends on AC, which is not really the Hawaiian way. Mm -hmm. Like where I live, I don't have any AC. I live in a mountain. I'm very like breezy. I just mm -hmm. open my jaw to see and let the wind flow through. Mm -hmm. And it's just a better way of living because I guess it's a the air is cleaner over mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So why not we just. Um, take advantage of the open air and make our buildings. Absolutely, like, yeah. That. And if you could get a zoom in into a number, we go back to six and zoom in, we basically see the the porosity, right? We really see yes. this, this layered. And you nicely use the term uh, stacked, and that gets us to number seven, and this gets credited as our friend Kurt Sandburn, uh, most uh, critical investigator and, and activist who um, always said, um, you know, stack lanai, that's what we should do. So every building we mm -hmm. built new, and this again is in Germany, it's still trying, you know, for the few months that you could be out there, uh, do the stack lanai, but it basically is, it's glazed for the winter. We wouldn't have this here. So, but it just gives you an idea how we would live more uh, in balance, reaching out to the outdoors. This project right. is called Treetop Apartments. To then um, go to the next step, number, number eight, um, so this is, um, what you see is just an exploration of densification. Um, what would Honolulu look like, downtown Honolulu look like if we incorporated more tall buildings so that we provide spaces for people just to dwell in. Mm -hmm. um, just visualizing in a sense where it's sensitive to the Malka Makai because over here, we really um, take pride in what we see when we are in a building. Yeah. And that's the mountain and the ocean. Yeah. And this building is just, um, I guess the Malka Makai sense is, it's more orientated so that it's um, sensitive to the, the environment where the wind flows through. Mm -hmm. And having a face in that orientation you're being, you're, you're taking care of, um, I guess, your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Because when wind flows through, you're dodging your, your facade and it's going on to the next building. Absolutely. So that's why you tested these sort of Malka Makai slabs, yes. right? And number nine is, an, is a micro and architectural interpretation of that. Why don't we build more exoskeletons that tectonically as buildings that would sort of allow people to dwell in the buildings and um, so learning in sort of these bioclimatic uh, exoskeletons would be one suggestion. Um, but then uh, you could go another way, which is number 10 here, which is more the, uh, the, the skinny way, right? This is more, <laughs> yeah, this is a more, um, I guess a more intense way of um, densification, but more so like um, having a smaller footprint so it's touching the earth lightly, mm -hmm. um, which also brings people more closer together, mm -hmm. which is what you want in architecture, because in architecture, mm -hmm. it's always about people and just interacting in spaces. Yeah, yeah. So having um, a smaller footprint, 
you have more people that would just um, be more closer to each other, mm -hmm. and you can have um, just programs where um, it's more inviting rather than having um, private spaces. You're mm -hmm. more, you can, it's easier to say hi to your neighbor. And that is a perfect way to introduce number 11. This is what's happening here. This is you bring uh, the essence of life back into the urban fabric. So this is a, this is a community grocery store we did. And this, we have to say at this point, this is not Foodland. This is mm -hmm. not Whole Foods, which is pricey, right? This is meant proletarian. This is meant for the people who are currently cut out at the lower part of the food chain. So this is a $50 per square foot building budget uh, that we built this. And here you can see I that see. to the left, you would traditionally call these people homeless, what we call them a, an urban troubadour, right? He's playing the harmonica next to where people actually have to lock their shopping carts and then they get their euro out back. We don't do this here, we should <laughs> do this here. We have this stupid thing with a break here, you know, which is a little funny and weird. Yeah. This is better. So very perfectly positions because by the time the old gentleman basically gets the, puts the shopping cart back, he might be likely to gratify the uh, the musician, the urban troubadour with a, with a, with a euro, right? Yeah. So a very sort of inclusive, um, sort of humanitarian uh, kind of way. Uh, and zooming out again is number 12 here, um, the sort of resulting resulting fabric, right? Yes that, um, I, you know, we can say this is sort of bioclimatically engineered, right? And people might say, wow, this is really dense, is this sort of comfortable? But um, if you look at nature, we'll get to at the very end, you know, nature actually works like that. Forests work like yeah, that. And exactly. the jungle is a, is a tropical forest, yes. right? So might as well. Number 13 um, is, is a very important component is socialization, right? So we need places for people, as you said, to hang out interactive but these cannot be uh you know again gentrified places this needs to be there's a cafe we did with a very low budget where we used vinyl as sort of a to cultivate vinyl as a material that you usually wouldn't use right so it's really bringing this sort of make really nice you know high high end high quality places for really kind of low budgets mm -hmm. so we're not talking this is as people can tell this is not howard hughes corporation mm -hmm. this is not kaka Ako. <laughs> This is a different logic here. This is way more proletarian than the other models. So number 14 is what kind of sort of testing device that you use to, uh, to test the, the system. So we had, um, you can't really see it, but we had a fog machine in the back, which was very, it was, I guess we tried to pioneer it in a way because as you know, um, hot air rises. so. We did a lot of exploration and trial and error where we had fog machine that would um, go through a cooler filled with ice mm -hmm. so it makes it cooler mm -hmm. and then it would just like act as wind so it's lower on the on the level. So this was an, an example of us testing wind. Mm -hmm. So where the fog is, that's um, I guess how the wind flows through the urban fabric when it's just a stack lanai architecture. Mm -hmm. It proved to be a very great sort of phenomenological device or, yes. or pedagogy. That being said, we're going to go into a quick uh, commercial break here, and we're going to be back with Chris Chagueta and his jungleism in a minute. See you then. Hi, I'm Tim Apicella. I'm the host of Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic issues here on Oahu. Uh, join us every other Tuesday at 12 noon and as we discuss how we try to solve our traffic headaches, not to, not to include just the rail, but transit and carpooling and everything in between. So join us every other Tuesday, Moving Hawaii Forward. Thank you. Hi, this is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm the co-host for Condo Insider and we're on Think Tech Hawaii every Thursday at 3 o'clock and we're here to talk about uh, condominium living and uh, issues that affect condominium residents and owners. And I hope you'll join us every week on Thursday. Aloha. Hey, has your signal just been taken over or am I supposed to be here? This is Andrew, the security guy, your co-host on Hibachi Talk. Please join us every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii. 
Uh, welcome back to Chris Chibueta's uh, Jungleism. And the next component in the fabric, after all being said, and obviously many more, mm -hmm. is one that's number 15 that relates to uh, Tim Apicella, who we just saw promoting his great show about transportation. So if we move, we should certainly use you know, on grades, walking, uh, bicycling, uh, or light light rail, which mm -hmm. we have demonstrated way back in 2000 for, for the Expo in 2000. Right. To then basically come to number 16, which is sort of the the uh, the manifesto, right, of of that rejuvenated uh, urban fabric, where this is um, again the stack and I, and then just having it so when it's dense enough, you alleviate from any like um, solar heat gain because it's creating a lot of shade. Mm -hmm. So just like an urban forest, when you're inside. I guess imagine like yourself in a bamboo forest. Mm -hmm. It's like really cool. You feel the evaporation from the shading. Um, kind of that, just bringing that into a, like an architectural sense mm -hmm. or structure. Mm -hmm. If you have these dense buildings around you, mm -hmm. it's all shaded and you're comfortable. That's a really sort of uh, really relevant finding that you just say, you know, cool, because traditionally, you know, the, the definition of cool for architecture in the 20th century and the buildings we currently have mm -hmm. are embodying that is about a spectacle form, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a formal approach and not a performative approach. And yes. so tell us more in number 17, um, further introducing yourself where you come from originally and where you've lived and obviously we know where you're now but also <laughs> which places you ventured out which mm -hmm. all sort of made you more aware of this potential so i've been an island boy my whole life i was born in guam mm -hmm. um, and then moved here back in the year 2000 where i started third grade and just being surrounded by um, I guess Hawaii's architecture, I didn't really get to see the sense of, um, I guess, a real developed city, mm -hmm. much like New York or Seattle. Mm -hmm. So recently I had the opportunity to study abroad in Europe, mm -hmm. um, Copenhagen to be exact. Mm -hmm. And it's just really eye-opening because you see, you observe architecture more, you understand architecture more and you're just exposed to a city that's basically designed for people. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to the images, one of the, this building, B.R. Kengel is my favorite architect. Um, this is his eight house in Copenhagen, where I really got to visit. Um, and the reason why it relates to um, this urban fabric is because his strategy in this building is more like a courtyard architecture mm -hmm. where you see um, this mixed building with offices and, and housing. The public programming of the building faces each other. Mm -hmm. So that ties back to all the whole like interactiveness, mm -hmm. people talking to each other, your neighbors greeting each other. Mm -hmm. And B.R. Kengel's story about this building is like in Copenhagen, they don't really want to build high Mm -hmm. because of some reason where like churches have to be taller than yeah, yeah, their yeah. surrounding. So he started uh, practicing in New York where the image on the bottom right is, is uh, one of the recent ones he did. This is uh, the, called the Court Scraper in New York where it's the same typology but um, using European architecture and American architecture mm -hmm. which is something that we can take uh, in Hawaii where we can get the sense of thinking, um, I guess, more innovatively in our mm -hmm, typologies, mm -hmm. um, making our buildings force people to interact with mm -hmm. each other. So here, here in the next picture, is this is where you really said this is sort of a, a local, a cosmopolitan approach. That right. We're not from here. You climatically more, uh, and you know, your your background is is the is the Philippines, right? Yes, as, oh, yeah. as ancestry, and then and then Guam and here. So me being the German guy, and I grew up in this in this fabric and this kind of fabric. You know, mm -hmm. five story blocks, really dense. I'll never forget ninety six steps up and down. <laughs> our, our direct neighbor, a tough lady, just turned a hundred, and we can certainly say, you know, it kept her in shape. Mm 
yeah. literally and figuratively speaking, the mom and pop grocery store, you know, uh, mm -hmm. milk place was down there, and I was the one to go and, and get it. So I'm, I'm totally in support of, you know, your experience and your feelings. And number 19 is when we actually met um, over there um, last summer, right? Yeah. There. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> So this was us in um, visiting one of your architecture in, in uh, this is the kindergarten, right? Mm -hmm. Kindergarten and one of the, the train stations, mm -hmm. which was really eye-opening because you actually got to see people interacting, um, especially in the, the train station where you saw different types of people just sitting down next to each other, you know, mm -hmm. there's nothing like they're not discriminating they're just there they're yeah they're people and the the timing couldn't have been more eye-opening because that was the summer of erdogan in in turkey yes. the brexit in the uk not to mention the elections <laughs> here all the scary stuff and all of a sudden we can see that actually sort of integration and immigrational integration actually works mm -hmm. so we saw muslims besides asians besides yeah. germans there were black people which aren't there many in germany so it was really great to see that integration work so that gave you made you look at your work you had just done before you had left which is number 20 in in a different view and a better view right yes so this was my project in 342 this might take in developing or not developing but innovatively innovatively creating a skinny tower where the main idea was to have people of every of every color um, the rendering on the right shows a, a nomad, a nomadic person just like pushing one of his units so that he can dwell inside this house. So it's a structure that um, just involves people of every kind, very inviting. Um, the rendering on the left shows like this is the community space where every fi five floors or so, three floors, um, just families can interact with each other. There's going to be um, spaces where kids can play. And then the typology is so that um, people from the upper levels can view from their kids from, I guess, their dwelling spaces. And since this was um, before, this was a project before I went to Copenhagen, um, I guess reflecting back on it, it was just like, oh wow, this is actually like the right thing to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Like people in Europe, that's how they they act like. Like they're um, they're very social over there. Like people are not, they're not really like, there's no like, st like a high status between mm -hmm. each person. Mm -hmm. It's more like, hey, you're a person, you're a human being, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> no, and, and that's actually a little we know from how it used to be here. That's mm -hmm. also the way it used to be here. I mean, the system was very social. There was no one left behind, right? Everyone was integrated. Everyone was taken yes. care of. The, the, the living was pretty much outdoors. It was easy breezy. And then, I guess, America came and brought all its goodies, and mm -hmm. some weren't that good. And the, uh, so this urban fabric, this invasive urban fabric of the current downtown is sort of an unreflectedly imported mm -hmm. uh, missionary uh, imperialist system, right? Where you just bring the same hermetic skyscrapers you bring to every American city, you bring them here. And so there, it's in, in total neglect, neglection of, of the very specifics of Hawaiian culture and climate being in very direct response. Right. So it was great to see you guys basically analyzing that and obviously not going back to the grass huts because we can't do this with the <laughs> amount of people we have here and things have changed so we can never go back. But these skinny towers you guys sort of uh, propose are sort of the evolution of, so there are of the same kind of thinking of living, but they do it under changed circumstances of that we got to densify, right? There's, there's no other way we can do that. Mm -hmm. and, and this picture here, uh, that was, looks rather intriguing, um, which is our second to last picture. So um, what, what are your thoughts about that? Um, this was just um, our class interacting with nature. And I, uh, I guess the lesson we learned from this was how seeing it as a densified nature environment 
mm -hmm. um, pulling that into downtown, seeing it as an intensified nature fabric. It, it works, like, you know, um, when things are closer together, that's when people will come together. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we learn in like an ideological way, um, just incorporating that kind of vision back to architecture relating um, nature and also like a built structure. Mm -hmm. You see that whole thing working as a system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. So if, if you guys would be here with us, if we would go out now, here and now, it's like the, the city is, the sun is low, the canyons of the streets are shaded. And then you see this lit up uh, backdrop uh, jungle that we mm -hmm. have almost like pouring into the city. Yeah. So that's sort of the vision to extend that down and, and sort of, you know, artificially spread um, the greenery back. Yeah. Absolutely. And not, not necessarily in a little way, but not in a postmodern literal way that we're literally greening. I mean, green should obviously be a component of it, but we're applying more sort of the, the, uh, the analytical uh, systems of a natural environment to the artificial one. So we're getting close to the end of the show. The last picture we put in here is just uh, basically demonstrating that we're already doing it. Discussions are going on. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our, uh, this last week, this is our founding father, Jay, here. Uh, running into the next generation. So you guys were the pioneers of jungleism, and you passed it on, including your awesome model, to, oh. <laughs> to this uh, next generation. This is Chloe and Pono uh, on checking out the urban fabric, and uh, Jay's in his element chit-chatting with both of them, with Pono about the pioneering of bicycling and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I just want to point this out. It's a pleasure and an honor to work with you guys because you guys will be the generation that will make this change. And so, it's a, again, it's, it's awesome to be able to work with you guys. And I, I truly believe that you guys um, have not only the qualification, mm -hmm. but also the power and the motivation to, to make this happen. So, I get it from you, Martin. <laughs> know, it goes both it's ways. your mentoring. It's, a, it's an awesome, <laughs> awesome way to work together. And so, thank you. Keep up the rigor and thank passion. You. And uh, thanks for being here. And all you guys, please join us this Friday, 5.30, at the Center for Architecture, just down the road uh, at 5.30, for hearing this show again with um, the speaker of this year's class, uh, Jonathan Quack and uh, all the other awesome speakers uh, that you see uh, listed down there. So see you for that, and see you next week back for a Human Humane Architecture. Thank you.